Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It is your boy, the SMT. In today's video, we're going to talk about a relatively new spectrum application, frequencies of waves that are going to be deployed by the carriers this year and moving forward into the future. Now, obviously, certain carriers will be doing this at a greater extent than others, but it's really important that you guys understand what's happening here. Uh, the CBRS, or Citizens Broadband Radio Service, spectrum is really a 3.5 um, gigahertz spectrum that in its traditional form is just a mid-band spectrum uh, frequency. And it's really, really good. I've been testing it for the better part of the last several weeks, and it's really starting to kind of leave an impression on me that it's going to be a big piece of what Verizon Wireless does this year and moving forward. Now, it's not just Verizon. It is you know, available to be used by any carrier in a, in a current iteration. So the way that this works is the CBRS has different designations. It's got like three tiers. It has an incumbent tier, which is these grandfathered use applications, which isn't available to the public. It's, it's going to be used for, you know, like military purposes and uh, government agency. So you're, that's not what I'm speaking to. What I'm speaking to is the general access or GAA, uh, which is first come, first serve. Anyone can use it. Verizon seems to be doing this in a big way. And they're using it typically in 40 to 60 megahertz applications. Uh, so that's pretty substantial. That makes for a pretty high capacity channel. They're pairing it with their license spectrum. So like band two PCS or band 66 AWS. So you're connecting to essentially like 75, 85, 100 megahertz of spectrum, and it's really fast. I'm seeing, you know, anywhere between 400 megabits per second to 700 megabits per second. It's really incredible, and they're doing so at a blistering pace. Literally, I'm finding sites that are being turned on every week, areas that I did not see any connectivity for CBRS before. I'm assuming that these upgrades were happening last year, back in 2020, but they weren't activated, they weren't being turned on, and they didn't start transmitting until recently. Uh, Carlos S. Tech has also been finding connections for CBRS for Verizon as well in the Las Vegas market. He's also finding it for T-Mobile. So it shows you that the general access, this you know, free to the public to use is important of what companies can do. Now, I'm a little disappointed at AT&T that they have not gotten on track with this and they have not looked into it. They seem to be committed or focused to the LAA, which is a uh, 5 gigahertz, uh, very limited uh, spectrum asset. I'm just not a fan of LAA. It, it seems to work in indoor applications. You know, I could see at a train station, bus station, airport, that sort of thing. I think that works well. But outdoor use, it's just its range with its low power and high frequency leaves a lot to be desired. The one advantage I will say about CBRS and band 48 is that it is a little bit lower than the uh, 5 gigahertz, the band 46, so that helps a little bit. So Verizon, in my testing and, and what I'm seeing in the CLE, I'm finding it on macro sites. I'm finding it in on, on small cells. It's popping up everywhere. I'm finding several consecutive segments of streets with multiple small cell arrangements deploying this stuff. So it's offering really, really good capacity. It's helping neighborhoods. It's helping businesses. Uh, there's a ton of new capacity because of it. Dare I say that the segments that have these upgrades, it's, it's almost rec unrecognizable. Uh, the networks are performing great, and I'm sure people are taking advantage of it. Now, there is licensed spectrum. So you got Tier 1, which is the incumbents, right? Navy, you know, fixed satellite, that sort of thing. And then you have the priority access licenses, which are the ones that the companies purchased in the last CBRS auction last summer. So that tier two priority access license, Verizon has 30 to 40 megahertz of it, depending on your market, where they can deploy that along with the GAA, the unlicensed version, which is the tier three in terms of priority. So the GAA is good, but the PALs obviously take priority and precedence over it. So if Verizon was to, you know, put that channel depth together, they could be transmitting 100 megahertz of LTE, you know, by itself in just CBRS, along with the other stuff that they're going to pair it with, which could be the AWS and PCS band two and band 66. 
So there's a lot of LTE upgrades coming to Verizon this year. Be on the lookout if you are a Verizon customer for upgrades with CBRS. I think they're going to be turning on a lot of sites in a lot of different places. I'd also like to throw in that it's not just Verizon. You know, I want to make sure that we understand, you know, T-Mobile also bought some licenses for this stuff. Maybe not as much in terms of depth as Verizon, but they did. And they also have access to the general access, you know, the unlicensed if they want to use it and deploy it, and that's fine. So you have the potential for flexibility, bringing more capacity to networking this year. And without making this too much of a drawn out video, you know, I'm just sharing these screenshots of what CBRS is and, and, and what it represents as an upgrade this year, right? This is this is ongoing and this is happening now. We're not talking about, you know, a year from now, two years from now, you know, like with C band. CBRS is something that's gonna be making a difference this year in LTE, and eventually it will make its way, you know, over to five G. And, you know, who knows how it's gonna play out in terms of you know, it's arrangement. Are they going to be doing, uh, you know, um, you know, I don't know. Every company will do small cells or macro sites. It, it just depends. But I can tell you what I'm seeing. And anybody who follows me on the Periscope, watches my video and sees the testing, Verizon is deploying CBRS from macro sites, large towers. They're also doing it from the small cell application. I'm seeing it paired with millimeter wave. I just dropped a video yesterday. I'll go ahead and link it here so you guys can take a look at it. If you're on LT only and you don't even have a 5G device, you're going to be getting five, six, seven hundred 700 megabits per second just on LTE. If you have the millimeter wave devices, then you'll be connecting to that if you're within the range. Now, I want to let you guys know, based on my testing thus far, the CBRS Band 48 from a small cell application is testing at about 0.3 miles which is not incredibly great, but that's really all they want to do with this, right? They they just need to bolster capacity in situations. The C-band is obviously going to broadcast from a much further range because the power is much higher. So, you know, if C-band is transmitting, you know, we're talking about N77, N78 at 10 times the power, we expect it to reach over two miles, right? Depending how tall the sites are, and, you know, the propagation characteristics, obviously, with the terrain. But, I mean, there's a lot of good that can come from CBRS. I have tested it off of macro sites. When I tested it off the, you know, traditional tower sites, if you double the height, triple the height, we're seeing the distance also increase. So uh, from the micro cells, I'm seeing about 0.3 miles. From the macros, I'm seeing about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Sometimes we're getting upwards of a mile. If you don't have any obstructions... If you can kind of get it tall enough, it goes beyond the mile, which I've tested in rural America as well. There's a lot of potential there. So I didn't mean to make this a long, drawn-out video, but I think if you are a Verizon customer, there's a lot to be excited about with CBRS. And I've shared screenshots and I've shown you know, videos of the testing, and it's going to help a lot of people out with congestion. The Verizon network is starting to take a new capacity layer to the next level. They're deploying fast, the upgrades are coming furious, and they're helping with capacity in a big way, which is great for the consumer. You know, you think about what we do here on the channel, it's about making sure that you have the best experience, you know, you're, you're staying up to date on what's going on with the networking. I have no dog in the fight, I'm no investor, you know, I don't work for any carrier, so I don't need to boost any carrier, I'm simply letting people know what's going on with this networking so you have the most knowledge of and staying up to date on all the news and development and the network technologies. So Verizon's got this huge new capacity coming. If they've got it in your market, you're going to see huge boosting. Uh, you know, if you're with T-Mobile, obviously you're happy. You're getting the N41 upgrades. That's great. Uh, AT&T continues to build out its first net contract, expanding coverage and upgrading sites for capacity as well. It's really a great time in wireless. More to come. I will be testing Band 48 extensively throughout the year. It looks like uh, CLE, the 216, is going to be a huge area and market for these upgrades. I can't wait to test more of it and show you guys more of the testing from the macro level and also from the small cell. We'll see how they do. Uh, keep it locked and keep it tuned to the SMT YouTube channel. More coverage coming, and we will bring that to you here. Uh, more testing and more experience with the networking. Thank you all for stopping by and listening in and watching this video. We appreciate it. 
and we'll see you guys soon on the next one. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have yet have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.